So in the last two videos, we talked first about uh, repeated measures models as a concept. We then talked a little bit about, uh, in the second lecture, how to implement those in code in R or JAGS for either a Bayesian model or a, a maximum likelihood model, and uh, also considering how to do these as state space models. Uh, now I want to kind of move on to talk about how we might generalize this repeated measures framework a little bit and where, um, where we have the flexibility to generalize things and where we have some, some restrictions on that. Okay, so first I would note that uh, our repeated measures framework can accommodate mixed effects models and random effects. Uh, so you can have uh, a repeated measures model that also has uh, a random time effect that's totally valid. Uh, this also notes that you wouldn't that not all uh, random effects make sense though because some might be redundant. So if you have short time series, you wouldn't want to put an autocorrelated error and um, a random unit a random effect on your observational unit because they're largely telling you the same thing. Uh, that said, with a long, longer time series, maybe you put both in, or, uh, you know, or maybe you have random effects on other things besides your observational unit. But uh, you know, generally, you wouldn't put a random effect on your observational unit. It would tend to be redundant with your repeated measures autoregressive component. Uh, it's really easy to extend. Uh, this to nonlinear models or any other sort of model structures. You know, if you look back at what we did here, we added uh, autoregression onto a linear model. The autoregression part never actually touched the linear model part. So, you know, it's just a matter of swapping out uh, to a more complex model or even a simpler model. You could swap out that linear model to an ANOVA or you could swap out that linear model to a constant mean uh, that basically any sort of model that we're dealing with can deal with um, repeated measures or, or autocorrelated error because we are, it's largely tacked on as part of the data model, not as part of the process model. That noted, you know, we often talk about when we write down uh, models that one of the assumptions that we like to have the flexibility to relax is the assumption of uh, the assumption of normality that that you know we if we have data that is not normal we want to be able to address that uh, lack of normalcy. Uh, so one of the restrictions you do have when you take an autoregressive approach of modeling uh, correlations through time using a, a, a correlation matrix, which then give, leads you to a covariance matrix, uh, most other distributions don't generalize to a multivariate form that involves a, a covariance matrix. So this, this version of working with a covariance matrix only works with a normal PDF. There are other multivariate distributions out there. Uh, there are more complex ways to try to deal with that, uh, but in general, uh, you will find that in practice, we often rely on uh, covariance matrices to uh, you know, uh, model the covariance between that. And, and the simplest way to deal with uh, more uh, general functional forms uh, is often through some sort of link between a latent normal process and a uh, a different different data model up front. So you know, we so late we you know we often deal with covariances and latent models if we need to relax that assumption of uh, normality. Uh, similarly, the state space framework can work with most any uh, probability distribution because we separate the data model, uh, which is not autocorrelated, from the process model that is. Uh, one other important generalization of repeated measures data is the, uh, or autocorrelated models more generally, is the 
the need to be able to deal with missing data when you're describing that covariance. So here we see an example where we have a data set at uh, X at time point one, two, four, three, and six, where we're missing uh, the third row of data. So when we're missing the third row of data, we would essentially construct the full covariance matrix and then drop uh, both the third row and the third column, uh, keeping us with a square covariance matrix. So when we have missing data, we need to miss drop the row and column from that covariance matrix. And you could see that that largely occurs in the distance matrix. So in a distance matrix, um, you know, the one is zero away from one, two is zero away from one, uh, but four is now three away from one. And so that dropping of rows and columns from the matrix, it's not like you have to build the full, full covariance matrix and then drop it. It's more that you have to uh, drop those rows and columns uh, when you construct your distance matrix. And it largely is a reflection of what you would expect. You know, the distance between two and four uh, is two. So, you know, things are going to jump by two here instead of jumping by one. The other really important and powerful generalization of autoregressive models that, that is really kind of cool, uh, really, uh, you know, honestly is, is sort of the thing that I think is underexploited, uh, is a really powerful framework, is to combine autoregressive models with random effect models with the autoregressive component in the hierarchy, not in the lower level. So we, thus far, we focused on autocorrelation of, of state variables as part of the process model. In hierarchical models, we can also think about autocorrelation in the parameters. So, you know, for example, you know, we might have had previously, you know, some parameter in our model alpha that had a random effect on it with mean zero and, uh, you know, you know, uh, tau as our uh, the variability in that parameter. Uh, that might have been, you know, in a simple random effects model that could have been a, you know, a, a year effect or it could have been a site effect or whatever. I guess, you know, in this case, it might be useful to envision that as a year effect. Um, but in a, a more generally, you know, we remember that hierarchical models, we can put, we can make any parameter in a hierarchical model actually varying. Um, according to you know, some observational unit or time or, or something like that. And when we did that originally, those alphas were independent of each other. So we just were saying, you know, here's a population of, of parameters and they, they vary from each other, but there's no relationship among the, the alphas themselves. What we're seeing here is that we can also put a covariance matrix at that hierarchical level. So I might have you know, a random effect uh, for time, but where those, ran those random time effects are autocorrelated. So the random time effects in, you know, year one is related to the random time effect in year two. And in, in sense, essentially providing uh, some smoothness uh, to time varying parameters. So that they're not just jumping, they're not drawn independently um, from the random effects, but they might be related to each other smoothly. And when we get to spatial models, we'll also see that we can do this with uh, spatial parameters as well. We can make model parameters very smoothly in space uh, um, as much as we can make them very smoothly in time using hierarchical autoregressive models. Uh, how we do this is exactly analogous to what we talked about in the code section in the last lecture. You know, you construct a distance matrix, you use that to construct a covariance matrix. You have an additional autocorrelation parameter you need to estimate. Uh, you draw the random effects from a multivariate distribution. You know, we're doing everything we talked about, we were just putting it at that hierarchical level rather than in the data model. But the, other than where we put that, how we implement it, it's the same. We're just putting it at the hierarchical random effect level. 
Uh, so here's an example from uh, a paper uh, by Brian, Brian Breckage. It came out a while ago. And Brian was interested in looking at uh, fire in the Florida, Florida Everglades and how it varied through time. Um, and when, so he, he approached this kind of using a very traditional time series analysis using an ARMA model. So that, again, that's an autoregressive model. So there is a, uh, a AR1 component, which is just a, a correlation with the previous time point. There's an AR2 component, which is a correlation with two time points past. And so there's kind of two rows, a lag one row and a lag two row. And then there's this moving average component, which uh, you know, there was a, an, a, an A1 and A2 parameter there uh, that again, we're describing how the, uh, the errors, uh, the residual errors themselves also are uh, related over time. So both the, uh, the state variable is related over time, but also the residual errors are related over time. In this case with lag two. Now this was, in the short term, uh, a successful model in capturing uh, variability in, in fire. But over the long term, faced the challenge that that fire over this longer time period, you know, from the 40s up until the 2000s, um, that fire was not stationary; that it was changing um, through time. So this AR, this ARMA model was capturing uh, the short-term year-to-year uh, -year variability in area burn, but it wasn't capturing the longer-term changes in the fire regime rather than changes in the fire dynamics. And to capture that longer-term changes in the fire regime, what Brian did is he allowed the parameters in the AR model to actually themselves vary through time. So he had, you know, moving average parameter one and two, autoregressive lag one and two, um, and allowed though the parameters in the model to actually vary uh, as an autocorrelated process itself. So he has a process model, which in this case is act, happens to be a time series model, uh, but he has uh, autocorrelated parameters in the hierarchical level of this model. <clears throat> and really this provided a powerful means for addressing uh, non-stationary processes. You have a process model that works in the short term, but over longer time scales, those parameters need to evolve. It would also uh, be, a, a, I think, a very elegant way of acknowledging that uh, if you were to make predictions out with this model into the future, that in the near future, you would have more confidence about those predictions because you would be more confident in assuming that the parameters of the near future are gonna be like the parameters you have right now. But as you move farther out into the future, uh, that those parameters may evolve in, in ways that are difficult to uh, anticipate. And you'd actually get this progressive increasing of uncertainty into the future as the uh, potential predictions for what the future parameters might be uh, become more and more uncertain. So with that, I'm going to kind of wrap up, uh, you know, kind of this, this unit on, uh, you know, how we can um, uh, relax some of the assumptions of, of autoregressive model and, and take these uh, kind of repeated measures models to the next level.